Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back. So we're going to focus in on AP Environmental Science Topic 2.3, which is this idea of what's called island biogeography. Uh, and keep it in mind that our enduring understanding, we want to focus on throughout the entirety of Unit 2, is that ecosystems have structure and diversity that change over time. Uh, so the key takeaways from this particular lecture are, number one, why are island habitats and species unique? Two, how does the size of an island impact biodiversity? Three, how does the distance of an island from the mainland impact biodiversity? And four, what can islands teach us about habitat on the mainland? <clears throat> so why exactly are island habitats and species unique? Um, well, for one, the only way for species to populate an island is through the air or by water. So flyers and swimmers, right? So our terrestrial animals uh, that are land-based and, and walk, they don't have an easy way to get to an island. Right, unless they are particularly good swimmers or flyers. All right. So Hawaii, for example, uh, we're all familiar with, is a very, very isolated island, a set of islands, volcanic islands out in the Pacific Ocean. Um, they're volca volcanic, uh, which means they're basically formed from the, the outpouring of lava under the ocean that eventually makes its way up to the surface. Now, the only way for animals to populate Hawaii would be through the ocean or if they're particularly good flyers and can uh, span large uh, spans of open water through the air. All right. So as a result, the only terrestrial mammal indigenous to Hawaii is actually what's called the hoary bat. All right. Um, and so like lizards and snakes and amphibians that can't swim across the ocean or fly through the air, uh, they're all over the place in Hawaii presently, but that's because they've been brought there by people through uh, a variety of ways, okay? Um, so the other thing to know about our island populations is they're often highly specialized, right? So uh, they've kind of had their own little separate evolutionary path and they've been uh, highly selected for very, very specialized specific habitats. So the most commonly uh, referenced example are the finches that uh, Charles Darwin cataloged and identified uh, in his travels around the world on the USS Beagle. Um, but anyways, so if you look at the, the finches' beaks, for example, on the different islands in the Galapagos, each of those finches um, essentially branched out from a particular, uh, you know, parent uh, type of finch. But on the different islands, they had these uh, modifications uh, selected for based on what type of food was available on that island. OK, um, so the species that occupy an island and if that island is especially uh, isolated so that other, uh, you know, species from other islands or from the mainland don't really come there very often. Right. They tend to have their own uh, evolutionary path and they tend to become very specialized to the very specific habitat on that island. All right, so taking us to what's called island biogeography theory. So basically, um, islands have a lower biodiversity than the mainland. And that's for several reasons. Partly because species are less likely to migrate to an island. Two, um, islands can support smaller populations than the mainland uh, because they're limited in size. So um, as a result, islands generally have uh, species that are more prone to extinctions. So uh, partly because there's a higher percentage of specialist species, but also because um, there's a lower genetic diversity and they can't migrate uh, elsewhere. So Hawaii, for example, out of all 50 states, um, has by far the largest percentage of threatened and endangered species. Um, and most of that is because humans have brought with them invasive species that are out competing. So those invasive species are more of a generalist type. They're out competing those native specialist species. Uh, and as a result, I think there's 437 different species in Hawaii that are listed as threatened or endangered. All right. So I have some key findings in studying islands that help us to kind of understand um, and make use of the information about islands is one, 
Big islands have more biodiversity than small islands. So keep in mind, the only way for organisms to populate an island is through water or by air. And so our bigger islands show a larger uh, target. Okay, um, so bigger islands are a bigger target and therefore um, have a, a higher likelihood that a, a seed or a bird or other species will uh, by chance land on that island, okay? Um, now, islands close to the mainland have my, more biodiversity than islands farther away. And that's called the distance effect, by the way. So closer islands are easier to reach for migrating species. So it would make sense that there's gonna be an increased amount of migration to that closer island than we would see on a farther island. All right, um, and so they're a little bit more resilient as well because um, genetic diversity can be increased with occasional or more frequent new members brought into that population. All right, so big islands tend to have more biodiversity than small islands, excuse me. Islands close to the mainland tend to have more biodiversity than islands farther away. Taking us to um, how this all applies to uh, the mainland. What can we learn from this? So um, human activities like clear cutting, building highways that cut through habitat, um, development of cities and so on, create these sort of islands, if you will, of habitat on the mainland because we have a little area of unspoiled habitat that might be surrounded by uh, agricultural fields or city blocks even, okay? Um, and also, a lot of our uh, wildlife refuges or nature preserves are kind of these smaller, uh, isolated habitats, or sort of like these islands of habitat. Um, and so just like the, the more isolated an island is and the smaller an island is, the less biodiversity it can support, the same thing would be true of small, isolated uh, nature preserves. If they're far away from each other, right, and too small, they cannot support a high level of biodiversity, right? And so because of that, what we've learned and what we've started doing um, in the developed world at least is we've started creating what are called wildlife corridors. So the idea is to connect, even though we may not have a, a large increase uh, in the overall amount of habitat, the idea is to connect these habitats. So we, we lose that idea of them being islands. So we create these corridors so that our migrating species uh, are more likely to hop from one habitat to another. And that helps them uh, increase their genetic diversity because species from one population can jump in and join with another population, right? It helps to maintain um, population size and so on, right? So examples of what wildlife corridors might look like in, in other settings. So aside from just having like a forested canopy connecting one habitat to another, rather than being separate little islands. Um, one of the things they're doing in, uh, near highways is building uh, these other wildlife corridors. So for example, you have a highway that might be easy enough for like a flying species, so birds and insects to hop over. It is not, on the other hand, easy for species like deer or bear or elk, uh, et cetera, to get across a highway. So they started constructing these corridors of habitat so that organisms can cross over those barriers created by humans without putting themselves in danger. Uh, but it's open to all types of organisms and not just those that are able to fly over the top of a highway, all right? Uh, other examples, rather than going under or over a highway, they might build a corridor that goes under a highway. Um, either way, the idea is by connecting these habitats that might be small and isolated otherwise, uh, we're con uh, connecting them so that we're not having that situation where species can't migrate, better able and more easy to maintain uh, genetic diversity that way. All right, that is it for this one. I will see you guys next time.